Hi, it's Mars Puyan from GBC Life. Today we have an understanding uh, great entrepreneur here from China, yeah? And she's been a returning, she's been in Canada, she studied there, and she came to China and she had many uh, successful cases. But before getting through the topic and talking to her, I just want to mention some of uh, her outstanding uh, success that she has. So 2012 Miss Chinese Toronto pageant champion and most talented award and also 2013 Miss Chinese International pageant star of Tomorrow Award winner and also 2018 Forbes China 30 under 30 list maker and vice president of Haifer International China uh, charity institution so which is Great, and uh, now she's a director of Totrend Investment Group. So we want to know about her story. Jessica, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mars, for having me here. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Ching Yi Song, and I was born in Shanghai and moved to Toronto, Canada when I was 14. Uh, I graduated from University of Toronto in 2012 and I studied uh, Rock to Man Commerce Visual Studies and also Eastern Asian Studies. So for my personality, I am both extroverted and very introverted person. For the extroverted part, I love hiking and uh, camping, like skydiving. Also, uh, I'm a certified diver. Uh, also surfing is my hobby too. And for the introverted part, I love Chinese arts. Uh, I studied Chinese calligraphy since I was seven, and also Chinese painting. Uh, on the other hand, I, I studied uh, um, the Chinese folk dance since I was seven as well. Uh, I was in the elementary school and picked by the Little Star Arts School and Troupe. Uh, so therefore, since then, I started learning Chinese folk dance for until now. Uh, and also I play a little bit piano. So after um, I came back from North America, I uh, worked in Hong Kong for a while. And um, during that time, I met the former um, financial secretary of Hong Kong, Anthony Lun, and he told me about the Hafer International, this NGO charity organization. So I was fascinated by the theme of the organization, which is uh, if you give a man a fish, you only uh, feed him a day. However, if you uh, teach the man how to fish, you will feed him a lifetime. So I was attracted by this theme and came back to Shanghai and participated as a volunteer in uh, Hafer International China and later became the vice president of Kauf uh, Charity Institution. So we basically, at that, uh, like before when I was doing the charity in the, uh, in the Hafer, I making a lot of uh, public speaking to collecting the donations from the international school students. And also I went to, I went with those international school students and teachers, principals to the rural areas like Sichuan province to actually visit the rural families which were sponsored by us and it's a meaningful and insightful trip. Um, in the end, uh, I work with my family Shanghai Tour Train Investment Group now. I help my family with the real estate development and also promoting the fire and public securities business. So my family started its business 20 years ago uh, doing the fine public security. Yeah. And um, after I came back from North America and Hong Kong, I feel the, this business is very useful. However, it's kind of traditional and uh, not very connected with the, uh, the Chinese citizens. So I want to use my advantage uh, the art, artistic way, like by using educational and also media to help to promoting this business and mm -hmm. make it more friendly and easy going with the uh, Chinese citizens so they can learn those knowledge and preventing themselves from the fire and the natural disasters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Very that's good. That's basically I mean, what I'm doing now. That's great. I mean, that's great. A lot of uh, things uh, you've done, and the charity part is beautiful. And you've been uh, 2018 Forbes 30 under 30 because of all these outstanding things and great things that you've done. So they realize it, and they uh, yeah, selected you as as the one. Uh, 30 under 30. Thank you. In 2018, you're welcome. So uh, you've been between China, Hong Kong, Canada, and so on. Uh, how do you see the uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem or innovation ecosystem in China, in Canada? How is it, uh, if you want to compare them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Based on what, what our topic is, it's all about returnees, what returnees uh, bringing value for Chinese economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, they can have some values for uh, the home country, it means uh, either it's Canada or USA or Europe. So how do you see the, the ecosystem, the, inter the entrepreneurship ecosystem in both countries? Mm, I think uh, Canada is one of the most developed countries yeah. in the world. And um, uh, in 1988, its GDP per capita has already been very high. And uh, it's ranked with uh, United States, Japan, and Germany as among the most industrialized countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And also, as we all know, Canada is the neighbor of United States. Yeah. And geographically, they are very close to each other. Very good. Um, so uh, American, uh, America is the richest economy system in the world. Yeah. And uh, American com uh, like company they accounts for a large amount of uh, Canadian companies. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Canadian economic system and its structure mm -hmm. um, is largely influenced by America. Uh, okay. However, on the other hand, China, after the founding of People's Republic of China in 1949, yeah. um, mm -hmm. China has developed so fast mm -hmm. and uh, it's um, it's growing speed as everyone can see it um, and with its large potential mm -hmm. for development um, so China by 20, 2010 it has already been completed a mm -hmm. relatively mature economic system mm -hmm. and um, um, I think it's on the way to become a more uh, mature development, like uh, the economic system mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good, very good. So, as a successful woman entrepreneur, so what would be your contribution uh, in a Chinese entrepreneurship ecosystem or a Chinese economy as a returning? Because you could stay in Canada or you could move to other countries, because you're well educated, you're well skilled. And you could have a lot of opportunities in other countries, not only in China. So, uh, so you're back here, and uh, what would be your contribution here? Um, I think the first of all, uh, I have the overseas background yeah. and education um, yeah. experience, so I can contribute my overseas um, like experience and also ideas to China. Perspectives. Yeah, yeah, and the perspectives as well. And also, I feel like because I'm, I am a, a woman entrepreneur, yeah. uh, I can contribute also in a woman perspective exactly. on the that's, economy as that's well. That's important. Mm -hmm. That's great. I mean, like uh, a lot of women entrepreneurs in China, we, we, yeah, we, we see that so these days. Oh, actually, these years. So we started Women Entrepreneurship Startup Competition in China like four years ago. And then uh, we gave up because we knew that women, they themselves, they can push it forward and they can do it much better than us. So that's that's great. That's great. My Actually, my well, uh, I'm checking my question to uh, the list that we have and so on. So uh, do you have any idea about role of returnees uh, in Chinese ecosystem? Like returnees, do you think that r returnees they can bring uh, a very good uh, value in China that can uh, differentiate Chinese economy with other economies? Do you think that China needs uh, those returnees they get back? 
Yeah, um, of, uh, first of all, I think the number of the returnees in China, uh, Chinese uh, entrepreneurship exactly. ecosystem is increasing, mm -hmm. as we all can see. Um, also, I think the returnees, mm. they brought a lot of fresh blood or yeah. innovative new ideas from mm. the overseas backgrounds. Mm. Um, and also it creates, the re because of the returnees back, mm -hmm. it creates a, a lot like diversity yeah. in, the, in Chinese culture, mm -hmm. uh, in the Chinese society, especially the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Exactly. Uh, because of the diversity, people can, um, people can learn from each other yeah. and that boosts the ecosystem become healthier mm -hmm. because of the, the diversity. Yeah. Very good, very good. So uh, one of the actually returnees, they are, they are back uh, because of emotional reason could be one of that. Mm -hmm. And then this emotional reason means that they get back because of their parents and the one child policy and also because opportunities that they see in China, which is more than other countries, yeah, they get back. But now we want to just focus on this question, this, this uh, kind of interesting thing that how much one child policy uh, influenced this uh, trend and this movement that we have a lot of returnees in China now? The, is one child policy is important mm -hmm. in this case? Yeah, as we all know, the one-child policy has already been cancelled yeah, like been recently. Removed, yeah, um, so uh, for me, for my generation, I still, I am you're, still you're, the you're, only yeah. child. In yeah, the family. you're the only child in the yeah, family. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you feel it. Yeah, so I you know wish it. I could have more siblings, yeah. and because uh, uh, I am the person like to share with the uh, with people, so I like to have more <laughs> siblings. Um, that's why uh, after I spending a long time in Canada, I feel because my uh, I stay there most of the time by myself and my dad mm -hmm. uh, comes back and forth. My mom, because she is the founder and the leader of the company, she has to stay most of the time in Shanghai to do the business in really? China. Really? Um, so I feel a uh, kind of lack of emotional connection with my mom uh, after a dec more than a decade yeah, stay overseas. I see. So that's why I chose to come back to China mm -hmm. to work with my family Great. and stay with them together. And also I feel like, um, I feel China nowadays has more opportunities. And uh, uh, because of the it's a unique circumstance yeah. and also it's unique status in the global society. Exactly. Uh, I feel it's more, they have more opportunities for the young people to challenge and practice themselves. Uh, so that's the reason I chose to come back to China. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in your talk, you said that uh, your mom is a founder of a company, yeah? That's, that's great. I mean, like the woman entrepreneurship in your family started from your mom. I mean, it's not only about you. So your dad has two women entrepreneurs in a family. Yeah, that's great that they can support. You can support the dad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But your dad, without you cannot do anything. Yeah. This is this? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, we've seen a lot of returnees have come back to China. Mm -hmm. Uh, why? I mean, uh, we, we, we consider the one-child policy could be part of that, which is kind of emotional connection and an emotional link that it has because of one-child policy, which I can come up with a kind of case which I myself uh, have uh, faced because we are entrepreneurs. I've been here in China for many years. I see a lot of growth. I see a lot of things. I see a lot of uh, uh, the policies are uh, being applied and happening here. One of the things was that uh, I had my staff and she, she was one child and even we had uh, the mom one uh, and then the problem was some of them they leave the company very soon and uh, most of them they are returning because they can't speak English and what happened is and after two months three months they leave the company because uh, their, their, their parents they uh, kind of arrange uh, job interview uh, for them to be in a uh, big company because they are so much worried about their kids and they want their kids to have a very good job because they don't want their kids to be an entrepreneur much or to go to a startup because they think they work a lot and they burn out, you know. So they want their kids 
to import big corporations. And because then after that, they want the kids to go for marriage and so on. All these things are happening there. But now I want to just get back to this. Why number of returnees are uh, increasing in China? A lot of returnees are coming back. Why? Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, China nowadays become more and more open and transparent to the international society. Um, because of China is still a developing country yeah. and also um, depends on its, um, its uh, unique circumstances and yeah. also its uh, special uh, status in the global society. For example, China uh, has 1.4 billion people. That's a huge population. Exactly. And this huge population creates a huge market and opportunities for the world. So not only the returnees wants to come back to China, but also as we see like Mars and a lot of foreign expats, they come to China exactly. to, to uh, seize these opportunities to um, do their business or other investments. Actually, this is a kind of very high competition between international people and returnees here. Mm. Because the point of the international people that are coming here, they're not as fluent as returnees. Returnees, they are coming with the heritage and background of having a Chinese parents, so they know the culture better, they know the language better, and they feel the connection. It is happening a lot than uh, like non-Chinese people as an international other startup or international uh, employees that they want to get hired by some big corporations here. There actually is a very good point that you mentioned because a lot of international people that they are coming here for a job, they're getting back to their country or they're going to other countries because returnees are coming back and increasing. So for them, it's not competitive. You know, uh, like the competition is so high and it's so difficult for them to get a job. Very good, very, very nice point and so on. Uh, do you think that the uh, returnees, uh, they can uh, have uh, better ideas, opinions and for uh, bringing for companies and so on? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so returnees, they have both backgrounds, studied abroad yeah. and uh, in China. Uh, so those experience not only bring, uh, brought them a broader vision, and also, but also they, they brought them a deeper understanding of the global culture. So when right those return, returnees face the challenging problems, not only they will like think in a very limited uh, thinking of the way, you know, they mm -hmm. will uh, spread like, like be very creative and yeah. innovative uh, in solving the problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And having critical thinking and yeah, going around the problem and see how they can bring the solution for that. So um, as a returnee, probably you're in the community of a lot of returnees. So have you seen any uh, successful uh, cases? Yeah, I met a lot of our returnees. They started doing business in China. And uh, for example, um, in the Forbes 30 and 30, this platform let me met, meet a lot of uh, good, like young, passionate, devoted, and capable uh, entrepreneurs. So uh, a certain amount of them are like studied abroad and uh, they are very creative mm -hmm. and devoted and also they understand the Chinese culture so they can um, mix everything all the factors together to uh, accomplish the projects very well and also I studied in a business school in China um, and also I met uh, a, a certain amount of uh, returnees um, they are like second generation young entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, they, they don't only depend on their family background, but I feel they are more uh, independent yeah. and also um, very creative in a way of uh, thinking. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, one of the questions that I have, imagine if you had siblings in your family, uh, would you come back as well? Or you would say, oh, you know what, my siblings are there. I don't think my moms and dad, they need me to help them in their businesses and so on. What would happen? Um, I think 
I still will choose to come back to China. Mm -hmm. um, not like, uh, not like a whole lifetime, but still at my age of uh, like young age, I need, I wanted to see the opportunities and like to challenge myself mm -hmm. um, to learn about um, different things. Because mm -hmm. I always think when you are young, you need to face more obstacles. And uh, uh, I value experience a lot. Mm -hmm. That's why I think I still will choose to come back to China to experience this fast, um, fast speed, you know, More economy. Yeah, yeah. growing, yeah. growing Grow. economy. Yeah. yeah, it's very good. So, do you think that are you positive about Chinese economy? It's going up. Like yeah, I, I, I'm very positive about yeah. the Chinese economy. I think, um, like, look at all the people around us. Every day they work so hard and people move so fast. Like, in, especially in Shanghai, I feel the energy. Yeah. Energy about this city. It's called crazy Shanghai. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the energy, it makes you feel so... Um, so positive. Mm -hmm. So I feel confident and uh, positive about the future. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine, imagine. I'm I'm super positive about Chinese economy, definitely. Mm -hmm. So imagine that if economy doesn't go well, or even economy wouldn't go well, like ten years ago or five years ago, would you get back again? So mm -hmm. I'm uh, putting you in a very tough uh, <laughs> situation, <laughs> condition, asking those tough questions. Would you get back? Uh, I think economy is not the only reason okay. to decide if I stay in China or I stay in other countries. Mm -hmm. I feel it's more about a combination of reasons, mm -hmm. like living quality, um, your family, mm -hmm. and career path, mm -hmm. and also the economy is also one of the reasons, right? So it's and so forth, so other reasons. Um, so I cannot tell you, like, only because of the economy, mm -hmm. I, I will stay here or leave the country. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about other factors in the future. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but as, again, I want to say, like, I'm confident about the Chinese economy here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. So if you get back to 15 years ago, so would you do the same path in your business and so on? Or just, uh, would you be a returning? I mean, would you go to another country if you, or you would stay in China? <laughs> I think uh, the past is past. So only... Just imagine. Yeah. Imagine understand. if you get back. I am the person who loves to look forward to yeah. the past. Um, but I, I think uh, for, like, for the past 30 years, mm. I had a very great journey. Mm. And... I chose every time when I made the choices, yeah. I chose to follow my heart. Nice. Yeah. And uh, not only the career, but also my personal life. So I think um, you, you cannot distinguish the people by its, uh, his or her gender. Mm -hmm. You have to distinguish the people by his or her characteristics mm -hmm. and also her advantage. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I chose um, to, like, to to experience the pageant, to experience the um, life in Canada and also China, mm -hmm. and also I chose doing business in the end. Very good. Work with my family, and uh, and also the charity stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned the charity. This mm -hmm. is very. I mean, I love charity stuffs, and I'm uh, wishing to do a lot of stuff in this field. How is it your charity things and how is it there back in Canada and here? Is there any difference as well? And can you bring some new ideas, new things in terms of charity from there to here? Mm. Yeah, what, what do you think about that? Um, so, uh, mostly I did charity work in China. In and, China. Yeah, yeah, in the Asia area. Very good. Um, so, in Canada, I did, um, I did some like arts exhibition mm -hmm. to help, uh, I, we collected tickets, admission fees to help those uh, Torontonian mm -hmm. uh, artists. Uh, but I think charity is universal. 
as long as you have a good heart to help others and uh, to contribute like selflessly to the society, uh, it's charity. Like even when you in a daily life, if you can hold the door for the for a stranger, it's also a charity. Very good. Yeah, but also but also why I chose Hafer International because of the theme. It's not only give the money to the poor uh, rural families. Yeah. It teach them instead of giving the money directly to the uh, poor families. Very good. They teach them how to make a living by themselves. Very good. That's that's a more sustainable ways of doing charity, and I feel it's more um, meaningful and uh, also it's a more smart way of doing that. Um, Besides, I want to say that because in Canada we have a lot of uh, social um, social uh, Activities. Enterprises, yeah. enterprises, social companies, yeah. right? So like I did a charity in Hafer with Tom's. We can yeah. buy with Tom's the brand of shoes. Yeah. So um, if they sell one pair of shoes at the, that time, they will donate one pair of the shoes to another uh, to Poor another family. rural families. Yeah, rural family. So I hope more and more social enterprises and social companies can appear in China, like Tom's. Like they can not only make the profit by themselves, but also um, at the same time helping the company, uh, helping the uh, rural family who needs to uh, who needs the help. That's great. That's great. I mean, uh, social enterprises in China have been increasing since uh, past years and that's great that the, the culture mm -hmm. of uh, social entrepreneurship as well is uh, this great here in China I think that's a very good era here to do something in terms of that yeah and I really appreciate for the old points talk and so on thank you so much for being here Jessica Sang a great woman entrepreneur in China I really appreciate it. hope thank you, you have you, Mars. Again. Yeah, thank you. welcome thank you so much Woo.